Howdy, folks! This is Band of 0073 here, cruising land, fun the road verticals, going into that car park with the handbrake. Today, I'm bringing you a Minecraft survival video. And, oh my god, has it been a long time. I'm so sorry, folks. I thought I'd start off on the interesting note that since then, this game has definitely been updated, and we got not one, not two, but three llamas in all different colors. Also, if I just jump up the top of the hill here, past these lovely, lovely llamas. Apparently, one was just looking at me. Man, I've gone the wrong. I get up this hill. Oh man! Oh man, I'm a spoon. Yes. Where llama? Basically. Oh. Yeah, getting up to where I want to be viewing from, sort of. Wow, I didn't realize how high this hill was. Hey, we made it! We made it! Now, as an update to the world, a little bit has happened since that uh, last Minecraft survival episode. As I said, I apologize for being so long. Just on the bottom down there, you'll notice a little cleared out area where the crosshairs are. With uh, some cobblestone blocks down there. That's where I'm going to be building some farms. Some basic farms like wheat, carrots, potatoes. Those basic ones, from sh I got farms up by the house there, as you will see me building the first couple of episodes. That hill over there, a mountain if you will, is not as tall as it was. I've been slowly taking it out, so it's probably a good 20, 30 blocks lower than it was now. Now, you're probably wondering, what on earth is this thing, Bandit? Well, I'll tell you one thing, folks. This big square... It's 128 by 128. May give or take a block or two. Because I think I may have screwed my adding just a fraction, but I should be right. But anyway, regardless of that, this thing, once I get this, nah, I'm sorry, once I get all this water here cleaned out, which is currently what you can see I'm doing here with all the sand, and I'll show you a little a cheap method for doing it. It's cheap, but it's very, very effective. I'll show you how to do it. Right? My inventory is clear, which is good. And it does involve this uh, this thing in my hand that we like to call a torch. I'll show you what I mean when we get back down there. But yes, I'm, I'm using the sand to, sand to clear all this water out. Not this side. I'm leaving everything over here. It's just inside this big square you can see. Now, when that's actually finished... That's going to be part of a mob farm. Can I ball? Hold on. Let's sleep. Thought I had enough clearance. Good thing my gear just dropped straight down to the bottom here. And the levels and the we're all no concern. Well, hang on that. Thank you, just some entertainment for the first episode back, folks. Yeah, boy, did this stuff explode all over the joint, though. God, how far is this stuff been spread out? There is my pickaxe. Wondering where that was. <sighs> uh, 
have to reload to get back up there, see if I'm missing anything. I don't think I should be. Out the Damn it, cow! How dare you! You're like I don't have my sword on me. Somewhere. Ow. Good. I guess I had a call. And sticks. That should be everything. First part about that was I, I changed my uh, spawn location for the time being. Let's get some coal. Well, there's gonna be a lot of materials in that hole once it's dug. Cause it's gonna be 128 by 120 holes straight down to bedrock. That's one mother trucking big hole. I'll give you. I'll give you a rough estimate. I was breaking out the laptop calculator because that's one number that's way too big for me to calculate right now. Let's see. 128. I want to. That's 16,384 blocks a layer. That. 1,438,570, okay, 1,438,570 one million four hundred thirty eight five hundred seventy one million and forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six blocks from y equals sixty four. Now if I divide that by was hundred and thirty two for a stone tool, that's seven thousand nine hundred forty three point seven five recurring. So basically, 7,944 tools. Like, that's everything inclusive, and then you gotta go... One... Two... Three... Four... Five above that. This filler here marks a rough center point. There's a, there's a reason why I'm doing this, and it's because of the way mob spawning works with mob farms. The idea is there's a 128 block diameter in any direction. But the, the idea is, is because I'm going to have it up in the sky at around y equals 100, or even 128, it would be better with a mob spawn. They can only spawn up there, then light everything up as much up as I can in this big ass hole. Then all I have to do then is collect the drops. Because what I can do is I can have, I'll have the mob spawning up in a area up there. Then they'll fall down a hole, and I'll have some full of water break it near the bottom to slow them down, so I can either kill them for drops. Correction kill them for, for experience, or I can kill them just by taking that drop out. There'll be a bit of redstone in that one. 
something like two dispensers with signs. Or a dispenser with sign, even. That's a very simple redstone circuit, actually. And I know from doing all this, I'm going to get redstone. Anyway, this method I spoke of. All I'm doing, and I need to do is double check so I don't flood my workspace. That could be embarrassing. How many blocks I need to go? And for the record, folks, no, I'm not wearing any armor. This is on peaceful mode. I believe it's like eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Now I don't take this row here out. If I do, I punch a hole in it, and we have water leaking in here, which is not going to be good. And of course, I can go. I'll punch that block as I know as a marker. Go to, from there to there up to this block, which is gonna, which is now a marker. And that gravel is a marker. So if I pull those two out, the two short ones die at the end there. I'll even put one more right there that I do die at the end. Okay. Because all I'm gonna do here is once I see this. I know I'm on the thing there. Anyway. This technique I keep waffling on about. Ooch, drop down. That just breaks Sly's legs. Yes. I got a Sly Cooper skin. Anyway. What we're doing is mining out the bottom block, placing a torch. For some reason, it breaks entities. And because sand is falling, or it's moving, it's fast as an entity. It also doubles as a dang good light source. Of course, you won't have the odd time like you just saw there where you've got to move down a block or sometimes up a block, like right now. And then you'll have moments like I just had there. Come on, jump. And then you've got to find your way up in order to get to where you've damaged. And then because I'm getting further and further into the into the lake, oh, oh the man-made lake. Oh well, raccoon-made in this case. Well, and you'll notice I have uh, jack o' lanterns scattered about just for a little extra light, especially under the water. It's quite dark down there, it's like 10 or 12 blocks down at the very bottom. Where left or one? Right, no. Way left, right. Eee! Plunk! Which 
I mean, you'll get moments like that. We go through water and this does get a little monotonous. Yeah, it does. But this is much faster than actually mining it out. Because there are ground and this at the bottom, you're going to get the odd pieces of flint and things, but minor issue. Not but a minor issue, folks. I mean, you got to craft the flint and steel to light them. Light a um, nether portal anyway, so you might as well have a free source of it essentially. And that was a little bit of a visual glitch because of the, the save icon popping up. I do have some redstone projects that I want to do for this world, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna wait for wait until I do this hole first because I know I'm gonna get a lot of materials. <laughs> the only interesting thing, folks, is I'm gonna deal with all the little pools of lava that are more than likely down there. out. That's better. Well, now we just take out 
everything that's not against another block. Like, we got one block gap, so we're not gonna hit water this time. There's one task and a half putting this uh, dirt wall in from, you know, from back there. Where I want the corner to be to where I want the other corner to be down that way. That was one hell of a task, especially when you're, you know, 30, 40 blocks underwater and you, you only can place probably 20 blocks if you're lucky, if you're going doing it quick enough. Which is why using sand is so much easier, because you can stay near the surface and the gravity will take effect. There is one other slight glitch that can occur with these falling entities, which unfortunately I haven't been able to do yet. And trust me folks, I'll be using some of the lava from these pools that I'm inevitably going to find. And I'm going to make some nether portals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one on top of the mob farm. On my own little platform that's well and truly lit up so I can get up there easily. I'm going to have one down at the collection area. I'm going to have one at my base. I'm going to have one... Actually, the time I take that hill, I'm just going to be evading next to my base anyway. So that's not going to matter. And then, uh, as to where I'm going to have it. And, oh, there is. I haven't thought that far ahead. Not yet. Maybe he plans to build this mob farm. And here's other glitches I'm talking about, folks. If I can get it to work, it happens a bit random. So, uh, but it involves placement of a torch at a pretty much a specific time. And what's meant to happen, you know, is 
the block, when the block's fall, you hit the, you place the torch, they actually don't fall. For some reason, the torch almost acts like a solid block. If you've placed it at a very specific time. There we go. There's the glitch for you, folks. There you have a toy under it. Nothing falling. I'll even update the blocks next to it, which should cause it an update. Nothing. I'll leave that sit for a minute for you. I knew it had to happen eventually. There you go. You have not the one behind that doesn't do anything. And there we go again. And again. We've had to have been live on camera three times now, folks. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get that uh, ball? Simple. Just mine at the bottom block. And down they come. I'm actually not sure what causes it. But, if I had to guess... I have to guess it's when you place the torch, you place it at the wrong time. And because you place it at the wrong time, it's almost like the game doesn't know how to handle it, so it just freezes the, letting it, the blocks from falling. There it is again, with gravel as the bottom block this time. That is a full inventory. I'll stow this away. We'll take a nap. And then we'll, then I'll keep on, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna keep on keeping on, and, yeah, so, don't want a boy is, you know, for five, six hours of me just doing that. But I know how long it'll take. With a rough, there's a rough, that's, whoops, wrong chest. The top chest. Well, folks, that just that brings us to the end of an episode. And I apologize deeply for not putting a Minecraft Let's Play up in quite some time. It's been, I just got caught up with all my other videos, as you can clearly tell. But regardless of that, I am eternally grateful for all your support on those other videos. And your patient waiting for this Minecraft video. 
Now, in case you're wondering, my HUD size is set at 3. Just to make it easier for my eyes. But, anyway. I'm going to keep on doing this. I'll take all of it. I'm going to take... You know what? This won't take that long to take out. How about I just take this out on camera? There it is, the glitch once again. And again! It seems to be if you hit the button. If you hit. Stay like that. It only seems to be if you hit the button just before the block breaks. But it's got to be on a really specific timing before the block breaks, otherwise, it doesn't seem to trigger. And then I'll just show you, and once I break this, I'll show you a little bit of what I'm actually doing on the water. Build it out of how I'm building the walls. And then, and then we'll call it an episode. There you go, one, one glitch. Yes, because the sand and gravels are considered to be entities when they're falling, you can stand under them. What, in them, watch this. I'll show you again with the face, the camera facing up. I won't if I glitch it. See? My health doesn't go down, and I apologize for those who suffer, suffer from epilepsy. Glitch once more.
glitched it once more. And you can see, folks, the glitch can be triggered quite easily. And I'm going to trigger it a lot more while I'm doing this. i got a long way to go. <laughs> it's one of my favorite songs. It's got a long way to go. And short time to get there. <laughs> Now, for those who are wondering actually what that lyric comes from, or which song, sorry, <laughs> this is one of my favorites from my favorite movie. Also, it happens to be the movie where I got my name. You see, the movie's called Smokey and the Bandit, and of course, as you know my general name, it's my name, but it's Bandit 0073. So, 007 coming from James Bond because I love those, I also like those. Films, but I also love that style of gameplay with the stealth and stuff. So, combined two band doubles in three, so I added three on myself because it just rolls off the tongue nicely. But the song was Eastbound and Down, sung by the snowman, Cletus Snow, played by country music artist Jerry Reed. And rest in peace, Jerry. That's a flippin' awesome song you got there. It's the icon of the movie, basically, besides the uh, Pontiac Trans Am that the bandit drives. Final thing for the episode, folks, is to... Can you grab some birch wood? I have this one chest. Craft another chest. Okay, folks, that ends this episode. So if you liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you really loved it, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video. And I'll see y'all next time. Until then, this is Manta0073, smoking up those towers, burning that rubber on out of here, and signing.